record setting Russians return to Earth. We'll have details on these stories and more next. Welcome back. Uh, it's Saturday, Saturday evening, and lots of garage sales today. I didn't go to any of them. Once again, I cannot justify going out and buying even more stuff when I still have stuff in this house that isn't listed. So today was another focused day of listing, 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 listing. Uh, last weekend, I got about 25 items last Saturday listed, a few more on Sunday, and then I kept listing throughout the week. This Saturday was no different. I got probably 15 things put up today. I, I'm happy with my progress, I'm happy with my work, but I'm not seeing the results yet. Nothing's paying off. It's been a very, very slow week for sales, and at first it, it, it had me second guessing myself. A lot of my stuff is long tail, and I price it to be long tail which also doesn't help me. I always shoot for the upper end, and a lot of times, honestly, I, I probably ask more than I should, but it's worked out for me so far in my journey to ask for the moon and come way down on best offers. I always, always have best offer on. So I've been, I've been kind of discouraged this week with, with slow sales and low offers. But then I started peeking around at, you know, other YouTubers stores and other resellers stores that I, I'm aware of, and it seems to be the trend, even some of the top sellers that I'm aware of look like they're down this week. Um, some days with two sales, where normally those types of sellers have 10, 12 sales a day. So that gave me a little more confidence and made me feel a little bit better that it's not just me. It seems to be the trend this week. I don't know if it was Easter or threw off the week or people are just broke at the end of the month. I don't, I don't know, but eBay seems to be down. And I'm sure some of you will leave comments. My sales are way up. I had a great week. This was awesome. I sold this and that. And you know, the trend isn't true for everybody. All depends on your products. Once again this week, we don't have much to talk about with sourcing because there hasn't been any. I think uh, the only thing I bought this week was a a wheel cover for a Jeep Wrangler I bought for like six bucks and it looked like it sold for about 40 and I haven't even listed it yet because it's still sitting out there backlogged I'm trying to get the standing items listed I'm running a lot of auctions this weekend I, I took some items that have been sitting around in my opinion for too long and threw them to auction and then a lot of other miscellaneous items that I had in the garage that when I bought, thought they had more value than they did. I I just want to get my money back at this point on some of these items. So, a lot of auctions this weekend. We'll see if auctions entice any buyers. I know not going to garage sales and estate sales currently, I, I'm missing out. I have plenty of inventory. Whether it's good or bad, I have to get it listed. I have to do something with it. I can't just sit in my house forever. And I know I'm missing out, but I really don't feel like here in Pennsylvania, garage sale season isn't in full swing yet. I'll make it up. Here's my new sign from uh, John Cincinnati Picker. Happy to have that into the collection of nostalgic garbage. I think it looks good up there. Thanks, John. Uh, some of you have probably come here from John's recommendation. Others, you, you should know who John is by now. John the Cincinnati Picker. Uh, great guy, super smart, just a wealth of knowledge, and just a, a great picker, great reseller. If you by some chance haven't watched his videos or stumbled upon his channel, I'll put a link down in the description. You should go check him out. I think, you know, he's, he's got a lot to offer to everybody, and his style of picking is perfect for garage sale season. Go check out John if you don't know who John the Cincinnati Picker is, which if you've found me before John, I find that kind of amazing. I'm going to stop rambling now. We'll get into some stuff. I don't know what we're going to do. As usual, I've cobbled together some footage throughout the week. 
We'll talk about some sales and probably, well, I guess I could just do it right now. We're gonna keep rambling. We're gonna go into the past a little bit. I was poking around the This Week in Reselling Facebook group, which also, John the Cincinnati Picker and Lonnie from Garage Flips, it's their Facebook group for their now sometimes show. It's, it's more like this month in reselling or this quarter in reselling because they don't do it weekly anymore. I'll put a link to that too. Um, that's It's a great group, uh, a lot of great people, not your average reseller group of snarky, you should do it this way, you should do it that way. Just helpful people, nice, friendly, helpful people. What was my point? Oh, I was poking around in the group and I was looking at some of my past comments before I started making videos. Because, you know, if I had a good bolo or a good sale, I would throw it up for everyone else. And uh, I stumbled across a couple baskets that I had shown everyone that I sold. You can make some pretty good money on baskets. Most people know, longer burger baskets, they can bring good money. I look at the comps and it looks like the prices are kind of driven down to an extent, or the desire just isn't there. That may be a fad that died. But the step it up baskets, uh, you can see this one here, I believe it says $84. I bought that at the flea market for 10 bucks. Wiped it down a little bit, threw it up, and yeah, made 80 bucks on that. Or made 70 bucks. I made money. I don't want to get into all the, the fees and the costs, you know what I mean. I sold it for $80. Uh, and then the Moses basket. Moses baskets, that was a... I looked at the basket and just thought it looked cool and on a whim looked it up and was kind of shocked at the prices that some of those were going for. So uh, just another category, another oversaturated thrift store item. You go into your thrift store and there's always just baskets everywhere. But it's another category where you can make some money if you do your research. I am a broken record. Do your homework. Do your research. Do your homework. If you look into baskets, there's money for you there. The other item is this automatic sweater machine. Uh, I've sold two of this model now, and Singer makes one. It's a little bit bigger, and I've sold one of those. And each time I've got almost $100 for them. Definitely seems like a great item to be on the lookout sitting in someone's garage. Ordered off TV, probably never did anything with it. The the three that I've come across have been complete. So it definitely seems like an item that was gifted or ordered and it was an impulse and then no one ever used it. But for some reason now they're they're in high demand. Uh, automatic sweater machines. Be on the lookout for those too. Just thought I'd share those because I thought it was interesting to see some of my older sales. Things that quite frankly, you know, you forget sometimes. You sell so many things on eBay that you forget you sold things completely. So it's nice to see a little reminder sometimes of some of those sales that I had before I was doing YouTube. All right, let's do something else. I'm talking too much. I was kind of challenging myself to find something in the thrift store that I wouldn't normally look at. I started looking at these throw blankets. I've sold quite a few now. I sold these two within a couple days of each other, and that's unusual. They're pretty long tail. I mean, they usually sit a couple months before they sell. So to sell two in the same week, I was pretty stoked. Uh, you saw the Beatles one in a previous video, and I'm pretty sure you saw this Layhouse in a haul video. So again, two, three months. That's usually about how long they sit. You can always pick them up for like three, four, five dollars, and you can usually, on a low end, turn it into 40 bucks. And that's been my experience. I've sold basically every one of these tapestry throw blankets I've picked up, I have sold. Take a look at the blankets. There's a reason there's so many of them at the thrift store. It's because people like to buy them. People like these decorative throw blankets. And there's plenty of opportunity. After these messages, we'll be right back.
it's Sunday morning now. I was really counting on a sale overnight or at least an offer on something and nothing. Like it's it's reaching ridiculous levels right now. It's really starting to annoy me. I just want a sale. I don't even care if it's like a twenty dollar item. One kaching would be great. Like anything. Um I'm gonna do a drive-by on the flea market. Usually it's flea market Sunday, but it's uh, 40 degrees and raining, so I don't imagine there will be any action at the flea market, but we'll we'll try. Never know. It was about this time last year that I stumbled onto all of this uh, new in the box, new old stock Pyrex. These are old percolator parts. And I, I made a few hundred dollars off of this deal. I bought the whole box for 40 bucks and then turned around and sold them for $50 each. And it took a while, it took about six months, but I sold every single one of them and I made a few hundred dollars here. So just because it's rainy and cold doesn't mean that no one will be out there, but it probably means no one will be out there. So we'll, we'll go take a look. And as suspected, there are two vendors outside. I don't even bother going into the building this time of year, typically. Uh, all the permanent vendors just kind of use the inside space as storage. They fill their little room full of junk, put their gate up, and then half the time don't even show up to actually put any of it out for sale. So I know there's really nothing to be found. It's what I expected though. It just seems to be my luck lately. I think we've had one nice Sunday since flea market season started. finally got around to listing a bunch of those blow molds. I've been putting that off. I was going to try to do a local sale and I said, screw it. I'll deal with the shipping and we'll put them on and see what happens. So hopefully that'll bring me a few hundred bucks in the future. Uh, I also had some Seiko watches that I threw to auction because I bought them in an estate sale. I paid 10 bucks for a whole bunch of stuff and it's another one of my weird mindset things of they're free because I bought a big duffel bag that we use when we go on trips. So I just count that as my $10 purchase and everything else was just money. So I had every intention of switching out the batteries and like selling them as working watches and like most things I never got around to it. So I said screw it, I threw them up on auction as parts and we'll, we'll watch this one live. See what happens. I don't know what all that was. Uh, hope you like my omelet making skills. Come on, that was pretty fluffy. I didn't even burn the bottom. <laughs> uh, it's like I said last week, it, it's hard to make a video about reselling when you're not doing a great deal of reselling related material. Uh, so I guess we'll just call this a bolo video. Some good bolos there. Some, especially those uh, Pyrex flameware percolators. That's a good item to look for. And I, on top of the stems that I showed with the Facebook post, I've found two of those coffee pots now. One loose and one in the box, and I sold them for about 80 bucks. And it looks like the price has just gone even higher than when I sold them last year. So they must be becoming harder to find. Um, I know there's a finite amount of those glass stems, and once they're gone, I don't know what people with those percolators are gonna do. But the Pyrex Flameware in general is a, is a good pickup. There's a cookware 
pots and pans that are made of glass and they have removable handles. And usually they're, they're blue. Um, the glass is blue. Those are another good item to look out for. I don't know. Yeah, this video is just all over the place. Hopefully next week we'll be back to normal and do some like actual reseller stuff. That'd be fun. I remember that, like selling stuff on eBay and buying, sourcing. It was good times. I miss it. <laughs> so, until next time, I'll see ya.